Okay, well, it's it's 1030 uh, Eastern time. Uh, I hope there are many of you joining from different time zones today. I know for sure that some of you are. My name is Jeremy Kaufman. I'm a chief resident at the University of Pittsburgh Medical Center in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, uh, which uh, for those of you not as familiar with the U.S., it's in the Eastern time zone, but some would consider it East Coast some would consider it Midwest. I'm still not sure. At any rate, I'm very excited to be here with you today. I have the privilege of hosting this meeting as I was the, the recent chair of the ACS Resident and Associate Society Membership Committee. And uh, as a committee, we came up with this idea to host the first ever International Resident Happy Hour in association with this year's American College of Surgeons Clinical Congress. We did this for a number of reasons, one being now that everything is moved to a virtual format, it, it seems to make it so much easier to reach out to people all over the world. And so one silver lining of this terrible pandemic has, has been that it, it seems to have in some ways brought us closer together and that we can reach out through virtual platforms and be in the same room, so to speak, with, with people on different continents. Second of all, you know, the American College of Surgeons has always been an organization that has valued international collaboration. As many of you, I'm sure, know, and as we'll go into in more detail in this talk, the college has chapters in over 50 countries all around the world. And we highly value the input, the feedback, the innovations and ideas that we are able to gather from our chapters internationally. And also, we feel it's a, a big part of our mission to not only enhance surgical standards um, in North America, but hopefully safeguard those standards and promote high quality um, surgical care and education uh, throughout the world. And uh, I think that's why uh, so many of our international colleagues like yourselves uh, are becoming interested in the American College of Surgeons and hopefully will continue to be involved. So uh, we, we have a rather tight schedule today, so I just wanna briefly go through what we have planned. Um, there will be ample time towards the end of uh, the program for you to ask questions and um, kind of give us uh, feedback regarding your thoughts. But the initial part of the program will be more of a, just kind of a, several um, groups within the, the college giving their um, an overview of, of what their groups do in relation to uh, uh, our international um, college and mission. So um, after I speak, I'm going to give the floor over to uh, Allison Powers, who is a staff member at the American College of Surgeons, really uh, in some ways the backbone of um, the resident and associate society uh, programming and committee work. Um, and she'll talk a little bit uh, uh, just as a welcome from the staff. Uh, then we'll have members of the the Resident and Associate Society uh, Executive Committee uh, who've prepared a video um, regarding their role and what uh, kind of they see as um, uh, the international, um, uh, what, what RAS has to offer to uh, you, our international uh, colleagues. Um, after that, we have um, our, our uh, wonderful and precocious med student Favor Anthony, uh, who um, has been very involved in the membership committee, uh, who will be giving kind of a, an overview of the clinical congress that's coming up, um, talking about some sessions that may be of interest to our international colleagues, as well as just some logistics uh, regarding how you can sign up for those. Um, and then we have um, Nelian Kanchu, uh, who's uh, a... Um, uh, a surgeon in training at uh, Vanderbilt University and is now heading up the global surgery work group uh, of the Resident and Associate Society just to talk about some of the work that they do uh, and how that um, how you can potentially get involved. And then at 10 o'clock, uh, we have Dr. Beck, who's a, a trauma surgeon at the University of San Francisco, University of California, San Francisco. I'm going to talk about the International Relations Committee uh, of the American College of Surgeons. Uh, and then after those talks, uh, we're going to open it up just for some 
questions. And so if you think of things as we're going along, please note them and uh, feel free to reach out during that time. And then finally, we're gonna have a breakout session um, where we, we kind of split into groups with the Resident and Associate Society, as well as the International Rel Relations Committee and Global Surgery Working Group, where you can ask uh, specific questions to uh, people from that um, group. So I'm already over my time, I apologize, but uh, thank you so much for being here and joining us. We're really excited uh, to, to have you for our first uh, uh, International Resident Happy Hour. I'm gonna, at this time, hand it over to um, Allison Powers to give us a welcome from the ACS staff. Allison? Hello, I'm Allison Powers, and I am the staff administrator of the Resident and Associate Society. We are so happy to have you as members of the college and happy that you joined us today to learn more about the college, about the upcoming Clinical Congress meeting next week, and to learn how ACS can help you in your career and ultimately with your success as a surgeon. You know, success is rarely accidental. It takes thoughtful effort and planning. And as one of the 12,000 resident members of the college, I'm sure you have your own reasons, both personal and professional, about why you chose to join the American College of Surgeons. First, many of you joined for the education, and that's a great reason. We know what education means to surgeons, and our education and training programs can help you reach and maintain the highest standards of excellence for you, your surgical team, and your patients. And as Favor Anthony will share with you in a few minutes, the Clinical Congress, which starts next week, has sessions tailored just for you. And in fact, many were organized and are run by resident members. Second, you might have joined ACS because of the networking and mentorship opportunities. As the RAS leadership will share with you in a few minutes, the cornerstone of RAS's work is done through our committees, which are open to you to join at any time. There's no application to fill out, just a willingness to be involved. And while attending our meetings on Zoom might be tough because of the time difference, we encourage you to sign up for a committee so you can receive the agendas and minutes and engage as you can, even if it's through email or on the ACS communities. In fact, speaking of the ACS communities, there are many experienced surgeons on the ACS communities, especially the general surgery group who are eager to talk with you about your cases, your career, or your education reach out to them by posting a message. They will answer you, and you might even find a long distance center. Third is leadership. For this, we strongly encourage you to go local. Join your ACS local countries chapter. Suggest some topics for your annual meeting. Offer to be a part of their membership committee and encourage residents from your institution to join. Plan a special event like a paper or poster competition and ask the chapter leadership to be judges or evaluators. In closing, ACS is here for you at every step in your career. We want to help you become successful and we are glad to have you as members. Thank you so much for joining us today at the American College of Surgeons Clinical Congress International Member Highlights. We are so glad that you can be with us. I wanna start by sharing some information about the Resident Associate Society of the American College of Surgeons. Then we'd like to introduce you guys to the executive committee for this year and let you know how you can get involved with the RAS ACS. So the RAS's mission is for surgical trainees and young surgeons or the Resident Associate Society of the American College of Surgeons. And it's to familiarize you guys it's with the college programs and leadership as a young trainee or associate. The RAS ACS provides you with the avenue to participate in the American College of Surgery's affairs, fosters development in the use of your leadership skills in organized surgery, and provides opportunities for your opinions and concerns as a young surgeon and trainee to be heard by college leadership. Our goals are to encourage future leaders in surgery and assist in their development through the American College of Surgeon and through the profession of surgery. We develop college activities and resources that are relevant to trainees and young surgeons alike. 
We provide representations for residents and young surgeons in organized surgery by making sure that their voices are heard um, by representation on multiple committees throughout the college. And we provide a forum for discussion of common issues that present itself in graduate surgical education. And finally, it's our goal to educate residents and young surgeons about the American College of Surgeons and the ultimate value of being a, a fellow of the American College of Surgeons. And so to introduce the executive committee, I am Yawande Alini and I am the rising executive committee chair. Julia Coleman, who is also on the call with us today, is the rising vice chair. And finally, Caitlin Ritter is the current rising secretary of the American College of Surgeons Resident Associate Society. So now let's get into how we can, how you can engage with the Resident Associate Society. Thanks, Julia. So while you may not attend meetings because of the time difference, which we re recognize is relevant for everyone on this call, you can still sign up to receive meeting agendas and meeting minutes. And that way that allows you to reach out to committee members to find out how you can engage in various projects and subcommittees that are going on on the various weekly meetings. Specifically, once a week, we have a committee meeting that is either for education, membership, advocacy and issues and communications. And there's a myriad of work that's being done by these committees. That includes uh, bulletin articles for the yearly August bulletin issue that features resident work. Uh, additionally, the Education Committee is a research work group that offers help in preparing research work. The Communications Committee encourages submissions to the newsletter, postings on ACS communities and social media, and many, many more programs. Uh, following the meetings that happen on a weekly basis, you'll get a link to add your name to one or all five of the RAS Committee's roster mailing list. And the sign-up will also have a list of committee projects. In terms of local chapter engagement, this is also an important way to get involved in the ACS beyond just committees. The local chapters provide networking opportunities with those in your local area that you may already know or work with. Local chapters can provide access to resources that the ACS National might not have. And leadership opportunities are present within not just committees, but also the local chapters for both trainees and associates. So reading, again, the committee meetings might provide ideas for chapter engagement that then you can translate to what you're doing locally. So I'm talking a little bit about how we can help international members more. Uh, the ACS really facilitates an opportunity for connection and engagement at the Clinical Congress annually through events like this and through other things that run throughout the Congress week. When COVID-19 subsides, International Scholars is a reciprocal program of international chapters that spend time in the United States based on Clinical Congress and our members visit with international chapters at their local regional committees. We create opportunities for mentorship through committee work and leaders in the organization. We also have the RAS ACS Global Surgery Work Group, which is doing a tremendous job in focusing on global surgery and how we can roll surgical education and uh, surgical administration out on a national and international level. So in terms of what's next, there's a lot of opportunity for growth within our organization and we would really love to hear from you. Please feel free to contact us with any suggestions or ideas about how we can best help the international members of our RAS community. Really importantly, we're here to serve you. So if you have an idea that you're not sure where to get it off the ground, reach out to one of us. These are our email addresses. We wanna hear from you and we wanna help you. Our job is to serve you. Thanks so much for watching guys. Hi everyone, my name is Faber Anthony. I am a medical student member of the American College of Surgeons and a member of the RAS Membership Committee hosting tonight's Hangout. During the next few minutes, I would like to talk to you about the upcoming Clinical Congress meeting and how you might have make the most of your time. This year, the Clinical Congress is a virtual event starting on Saturday, October 23rd and running through Wednesday, October 27th. The theme for the meeting is Resilience in the Pursuit of Excellence, and it's offering more than 200 sessions, including sessions that are of particular interest to residents, a full exhibit hall displaying surgical innovations, named lectures for medical leaders, and fun events to engage, encourage wellness, fun, and travel experiences had the meeting been held in person in Washington, D.C. What is the first thing that you should do? Register. You can register online through the ACS website. Resident members of the ACS do not pay a registration fee, and you see there is a fee for associate fellow members based on the World Bank's income classification. After you register, you will get an email from the college confirming your registration ID number. 
you will need this number to log in along with your last name. As soon as you get this email, you can start to build your playlist of sessions, named lectures, and fun events to attend. However, remember the Congress doesn't start until October 23rd. Sessions will, have, will be available after the Congress ends on October 27th for viewing for several months afterward. To build your playlist, access the Program Planner. Here is a screenshot of the Program Planner page. You can browse by day, session type, or track. When Clinical Congress opens on October 23rd, it's your time to learn. In the next few slides, I will share with you a few sessions that are specifically designed for residents in mind. On Saturday, October 23rd, two sessions jumped out at us from the program planner. The first one is the resident autonomy, the next frontier in surgical education, and the second one would be identifying and addressing inequities in surgery residency training. On Sunday, October 24th, you will have an opportunity to view the Surgery Resident Program at Clinical Congress, an all-day event. The morning session is just under two hours and covers topics such as physician employment contracts, diversifying the surgical pipeline, and ergonomics. In the afternoon, the Resident and Associate Society puts on its annual symposium panel. It's a debate-style panel session, and this year's topic is competency-based training. On Monday morning, we will all be waiting to hear what Dr. Anthony Fauzi says about COVID-19, lessons learned and remaining challenges during the Martin Memorial Lecture. For those unfamiliar with Dr. Fauzi, he is a physician, scientist, and immunology expert and chief medical advisor to the President of the United States. More sessions that may be of interest to you will be the session that will be taking place on Monday, October 25th at 12 p.m. Central Time. That would be on peer review, a principle under threat. The next session will be taking place on Tuesday, October 26th at 2 p.m. Central Time. And that will be talking about diversity and inclusion in surgery, practicing what we preach. Another session of interest would be on Wednesday, October 27th at 1 p.m. Central Time. That would be on taking better care of my patients through quality improvement. Next, it's time to plan for some fun. The Clinical Congress Programming Committee has planned special events and activities for you and the learning opportunities. Some of these events require advanced registration and a few have an additional fee. Wellness events. You can participate in two types of yoga classes, both vinyasa and restorative, as well as pilot class. Be sure to make time to browse through the virtual exhibit hall, which will be open all week, and learn about the latest innovations in surgery and patient care. Next, make some time to network. Each morning, you can tune into a morning discussion with the ACS leadership, learn from ACS staff members who have a particular interest in a specific hobby, and learn how to make chocolate creations, mix cocktails, and discover more about wines from California. If Clinical Congress had been in person this year, we would have gathered in the city of Washington, D.C., America's capital city. ACS has compiled several virtual tours on this local favorites page to give you a glimpse into this world-class city. This page provides access to Washington, D.C.'s favorites such as the National Zoo, several museums, and tours of local D.C. restaurants. And my final suggestion is to engage with all of us on social media. Use the official hashtags and share your experiences on Twitter. Thank you for listening and I hope you have a great Congress. Thanks everybody for watching. Next, we'll have Dr. Marissa Bowick talk to us about the International Relations Committee. So I'm gonna talk to you today about the International Re Relations Committee. So as mentioned, I'm Marissa Beck. I am at UCSF as a trauma and critical care surgeon, and I've had the opportunity to be the RAS liaison um, to the International Relations Committee. And before that, I was helping run the um, RAS Global Surgery Working Group, which Nellie Ann is going to speak with you about in a moment. And it's so lovely to have you all here. So thanks so much for joining. And I want to thank um, Kathleen McCann, um, who is one of the staff members at ACS, who helped put these slides together. And also Tony Ortiz is one of the staff members at ACS that also helps run the International Relations Committee. So I just want to go into a little bit about how the IRC supports international residents and young surgeons. So um, one of the focus 
area is in education. And so as I already just mentioned about the clinical Congress, um, there's the clinical Congress and then there's a leadership conference that has free registration for medical students and also for resident surgeons who are ACS members. Um, and then if you look into other meetings that ACS has, you can usually have reduced registration rates. And then there's also a bunch of webinars that are put on that are really fantastic. Um, and these are a couple of them that are listed here that have either happened or are upcoming. Um, so we have uh, the he for she webinars um, about um, gender equity and about supporting all of us um, in the surgical space. And so um, talking about why doing the right thing matters, talking about the Casexa scholars, and then something coming up in December is Pathways to Leadership. And then we have um, things on current topics such as COVID-19, which has affected all of us globally and, and how that's impacted global surgery management, talking about surgical leadership and also mass casualty trauma management, um, and then well-being as well, which as you saw at the Clinical Congress, there's a couple items as well for wellness. And so um, surgeons as second victims, that's coming in January, managing microaggressions and then reframing well-being. And so also in the theme of education, we have some textbooks. Um, there's the gastrointestinal um, surgical emergencies that's actually coming out this week. And then um, a practical guide to managing breast cancer for low and middle income countries is coming out in January. And then there are a bunch of scholarships as you see here. And all of this information can also be found on the website as well, If because um, I know I'm moving a little bit quickly uh, in um, respect of our time. And so um, there are international guest scholarships um, for surgeons outside of North America that have a strong interest in research and teaching um, so that you can visit for clinical research and teaching opportunities in the United States and Canada and also that you participate in the Clinical Congress. There's the International ACS NISQIP, the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program Scholarship, and that's for people that have a strong interest outside of North America in surgical quality improvement, and you come to the ACS Surgical Quality and Safety Conference, um, and you can meet program leaders. There's the ACS AAST International Scholarship, if you're specifically working in acute care surgery and trauma and emergency general surgery, community surgeons travel awards, um, ACS ASBRS International Scholarship for Breast Cancer Surgery um, and International Scholarships for Surgical Education as well. So you can find more information about all of that on our website. And then networking, which I know Allison mentioned is one of the big reasons that people join ACS and, and RAS. Um, and so there is a mentorship program for international surgeons that's coming next June um, in partnership with the Women in Surgery Committee. Um, also, we're building an international observer database and um, that's a partnership with the Board of Governors that's coming early next year. There are actually 48 international chapters. Um, and so as Allison had mentioned, it's great to join your local chapters. You can find that on the web. And then meeting surgeon colleagues at meetings. I know it's a little more difficult virtually in this world, but actually, you know, I think it does cut out the need for travel costs and everything and allows you to meet people um, like we're doing here. So how can you get involved uh, with the International Relations Committee? Um, well, <clears throat> we love to receive ideas uh, for educational programs and um, everybody has a wonderful viewpoint that we'd love to incorporate. And so um, you can serve on different work groups, um, like what resources are needed for young surgeons or where you work. So you can send these ideas, comments, and suggestions. As I mentioned before, we have Tony Ortiz and Kathleen McCann and their emails are here. And then um, you can join like what I'm doing as an IRC um, liaison from RAS, um, which is an application process, and then you're selected uh, for a term um, or to the Young Fellows Association. And then you can also become involved as an ad hoc member of a work group as well. So thank you so much for your attention and happy to take any questions in the chat or later on in our breakout groups. All right, thanks so much, Dr. Beck. Um, I think um, uh, if there aren't any immediate questions, we'll go ahead and move on to um, to Nelly Anj, and uh, who I believe is going to talk to us about uh, the Global Surgery Working Group. Dr. Kanchu, are you on the call? Yes, I am. I'm going to go awesome. ahead and share my screen. So welcome. I'm so excited to see so many of you guys um, on this happy hour. Um, I'm going to take just uh, five to 10 minutes to talk about the RAS Global Surgery Work Group and hopefully get you pumped about the different opportunities there are and how you can join our group and also partner with us on different projects we have going on. So just a brief background of the group. Uh, RAS, I think you've already ha heard a background about what that is and understanding that we have residence fellows and junior faculty 
um, from ACS who are part of it. For the Global Surgery Work Group this past year, we had about 125 members and they are members who are specifically interested in how surgery and global health intersect. Um, and our members are at different stages in their global surgery journeys. So uh, you could be fresh or you could have had years of experience, whether in research or clinical practice, whatever. It's just that you need to have an interest in the subject matter. In terms of why we have this group, um, we felt like it was important to have a formal platform. And this is for uh, trainees to basically have a way to network and collaborate with other people who have similar interests um, to themselves and to use this platform for both advocacy and for advancement of global surgery, uh, because we do see ourselves as citizens, not just of our individual countries, but um, as citizens of the globe as a whole. So the overall vision for our group is to harness in, uh, the enthusiasm and unique skill sets of surgical trainees effectively. Um, in order to advance the field of global surgery through collaboration and sustainability. I mean, also to foster the philosophy that the global is also local. I think that um, almost everyone knows that, that in their particular country, you have urban areas, you have rural areas, and a lot of times the rural is going to be a little bit more global um, for each and every one of us than um, you know, our capital cities. So um, our leadership is here listed. Our wonderful outgoing vice chair is uh, Dr. Rachel Davis. I'm the incoming chair, sorry, and the incoming vice chair is Kajal, and then the incoming secretary is Erin Scott. So um, our mission in particular is going to be to break the silos um, that are created throughout the surgical space via a unified surgical trainee voice. Um, each and every one of us is passionate about global surgery. Um, in order to define, um, advocate for, and realize our role in the field. And hopefully we will be able to produce maximum impact in, in whichever avenue we select. So just some fast facts. Um, over the past year, we've had um, eight different general body meetings. Our membership roster, as I've noted, is of 125 people. And we communicate using our group listserv, um, email listserv, and our Slack channels. And basically that's to disseminate information on conferences, webinars, meetings, partnership events, and all other activities in the global surgery space that are of interest to our members. So um, this is just our basic structure. I will just note that um, Operation Giving Back, which is OGB, is one of our strong partnerships uh, with whom we liaise and our external affairs team um, does a lot of work with them. So in terms of projects that we have been a part of over the past year, that would be particularly relevant for international residents and associates. So our hangouts and webinars are really a great place, not only to meet people and to be able to have frank open discussion, but also to learn about themes and topics in global surgery um, that are extremely important. So an example is our ethics in global surgery um, hangout that we had in December of last year. And basically the theme of it was the ethical dilemmas that we face as trainees when we travel to different countries and try to understand exactly what our scope um, of practice should be. And also how do we um, affect bilateral impact? Um, so what are we giving and not just what are we getting? Uh, we also had a lovely global surgery research in the time of COVID-19 session, which um, occurred just last month. And it enabled our members to share with one another lessons that they've learned on how to adapt during this time. Um, and the uh, particular topics were how to develop and maintain global partnerships, how to adapt and pivot research plans, and how to redefine success as a global surgery research trainee during the COVID-19 pandemic. And obviously people in all different types of countries are conducting different research projects. So a um, hangout like this would be beneficial to any international um, resident or um, trainee who is in a similar position where maybe you had planned on traveling to a different country or maybe you had partners from a different country who were supposed to come to your country to uh, conduct a research investigation and it was kind of halted by COVID-19. How'd you still end up having a successful product um, that you can submit for publication? And then lastly is what we're doing today. We're obviously having a virtual happy hour um, for our residents and associate fellows. And so I hope that you guys get not just information from this session, but also an opportunity to meet one another 
and network and really like exchange contact information and keep it going. So from our training engagement standpoint, um, we had a task force that was working on an ethics engagement guidelines. And so it's a little bit of an offshoot from our ethics um, hangouts that we had. And uh, we're in the process of arriving at a consensus agreement. We've had our first version sent out um, and we'll continue to work on that. And it's important for everyone who's working internationally to just have a very, very clear sense of how to respect local customs, customs and cultures in the work that we are doing. Uh, we have a registry group, which is um, a great resource for anyone who is a part of our work group. It's a database that we started compiling this past summer, and it's to provide all of our members with the resource of past, ongoing, and future global surgery projects um, that we have been a part of um, all around the world. And we've also included contact information for project leads. So if you're looking for a particular project um, or you have one that um, you require some additional um, workers, I should say human resources to, um, to effectively conduct. This is a really great registry to be a part of. Um, and then we have all of our contact information. So you can always uh, email the exact person who did that project and get some more information on it. Our needs assessment, we are also working on getting IRB approval. And this is basically for a tool that assess the needs of surgical trainees globally. And the exact topics are components of surgical training, um, what should they be? And then also how to identify, evaluate, and mitigate the different barriers and challenges we have as global surgery trainees. We have a mentorship program that any of you who may be from Puerto Rico um, are hopefully a part of. And uh, this was a partnership uh, between H. Maria and ourselves, and H. Maria was for Hurricane Maria. And we match up our ACS fellows um, and medical students and residents who are in Puerto Rico medical schools and um, hospitals. And basically each pair will have a monthly meeting and the topics that we cover are listed below. Um, for myself, I am a mentor in this program. It's very rewarding. Um, my mentee is just wrapping up with medical school and applying into general surgery. And so we've really been able to use this program as an opportunity to conduct mock interviews and get him prepared um, for the interview trail um, and succeeding in it. Um, another example of things that you might get access to as part of GSWG, that we have a Rwandan trauma system assessment and strategic implementation project that's ongoing. So uh, a lot of times what will happen with our group is that we will um, get offers from other organizations soliciting with projects that they have that they need people to be a part of. So it's a great way for others to generate the talent to work and for us to be able to um, disseminate information on possible research projects for our members. And so the um, agents in this project are the ACS Committee on Trauma, Operation Giving Back, the Ministry of Health of Rwanda, and we have five GSWG members who are currently working on it. Um, for anyone who's interested in trauma systems, uh, you'd probably be very excited about this. Uh, they're currently working on conducting the emergency care system assessment tool for Rwanda, then um, figuring out exactly what the implementation priorities should be and then executing. Uh, I will just let you know that there are various phases to this project. So if it's something that you're interested in, you can feel free to reach out to me because at the next phase, I'm sure that they will need some more um, people who are willing to like, do this research work. Um, and there are plans to expand beyond trauma hopefully through the cardiac and the plastic surgery fields as well. So if you're interested in um, surgical subspecialties, this might be a really good project for you. Um, and I just put here kind of like the how of what we're doing it, of how we're um, conducting this project. And it'll allow you to gain skills in how to assess a current trauma system, how to develop um, action priorities, um, how to get support in implementing all of the uh, strategic tasks that you have, and also how do you coordinate stakeholders? I think a lot of times in uh, global surgery research, that is one of the toughest things. Who are the correct people to reach out to and how do you gain access to them? So with that, um, that was just going to be a quick snapshot of the uh, different opportunities that you have as international uh, residents um, and trainees. So please feel free to ask any questions, give comments or suggestions. Awesome. Thank you, Nelly Anj. I, 
I get super excited every time uh, I hear about the work that the Global Surgery Working Working Group is doing. Uh, and I want to thank you and um, Marissa, Rachel, Aaron, Kaja for all the hard hard work that you've been doing to uh, develop that group over the past couple of years.